Hey guys, this is Candle, and it's time for a new collection pickup, you know, gaming pickups video. Uh, it's going to be kind of a small pile here. Small? Yes, a small pile here. Um, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, first up is Pikmin 4. I have not actually played this yet. I have opened it. It's currently in my Switch, waiting for me to, to just start it. Uh, but I haven't played this yet, mostly because I've had so many other games to play recently that I just haven't really had the time. However, I am looking forward to it. I did very much enjoy Pikmin 1. It's one of my all-time favorite GameCube games. Not so much Pikmin 2, but I don't have as much nostalgia for that one. I did enjoy Pikmin 3, however. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to this. Looking forward to eventually picking up the uh, uh, physical edition, uh, editions of 1 and 2, and eventually, you know, 3 Deluxe as well, uh, eventually. So definitely glad to have this in my collection. Uh, next up is another game I haven't played. In fact, it's not even open opened yet, and that is Link's Awakening. This is the Switch remake of it, and um, I played this back in the day on the the Game Boy Color. wasn't as enamored with it. I, I very much preferred the other uh, Game Boy Color uh, Zelda games, specifically Oracle, Oracle of Ages, is one of my favorites. Uh, so I, I was a little reticent to pick this up when it came out, simply because it was a $60 title and they hadn't really, to my eyes, done much more than just update the visuals. Like the gameplay is exactly the same. Uh, there's like a new dungeon, there's a new dungeon editor, but they're not as in depth as I might've otherwise liked. Uh, however, uh, I am looking forward to eventually trying this, especially because I'm still on a little bit of a Zelda high from uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I played through this, throughout pretty much all of, of May and early June. And uh, very much uh, uh, looking forward to this as well. I, I was, at least. Uh, I really, really enjoyed my time with this game. I put about 50, 60 hours into it, something like that. Uh, I ended up doing almost all of the shrines. The only ones I'm missing, I'm, I'm missing like maybe 10 or so uh, up in the sky. But other than that, I, I beat the game, really enjoyed it. If you like Breath of the Wild, it's more of the same, pretty much. Just more uh, beyond that. All the new crafting uh, features, the new uh, mechanics and stuff like that. Very much enjoyed the, the problem solving in this game where it's very, very open in the fact that, yeah, there are design solutions to each of the, the shrine puzzles, but a lot of times you can create your own solutions as well and, you know, not feel like you're cheating the game or cheesing it or anything like that. So still very much enjoyed this. Uh, I will say if you're going to play this, definitely make sure you get all the Dragon Tears because that will help you understand the story and it is a very good story. Uh, it's, it's just like Breath of the Wild. It's very much in the background for the most part. A lot of it's told through flashbacks, but still very, very good. Um, anyways, that is it for Switch right now. So we're going to move on to PS5. And starting up is a game that I played uh, as a Let's Play not too long ago. However, not this version of it. This is Sonic Origins Plus. I did a, a Let's Play of the standard version of Sonic Origins on PC not that long ago. Really enjoyed it. Uh, was a little disappointed that you can't play uh, with a classic live system in full or er, in widescreen. It's either one or the other. You're either in widescreen in the anniversary mode with the, the coins instead of lives, or you're in, you know, the classic full frame, you know, classic mode uh, with, with stuff like that. So I am looking forward to eventually playing through this again, uh, partially because there's new playable characters, including Amy. You can play as Amy now. Uh, but also because there's like a dozen additional uh, classic Sonic games that were included as uh, uh, unlockables. And these are these are mostly games from the Game Gear and I think the Master System. I'm not enti entirely sure. Uh, but yeah, it, it includes like a whole bunch of them. Like 12 Collector Game Gear titles. Uh, on the back here it shows... Sonic the Hedgehog 1, Sonic Chaos, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. But I also know it includes uh, a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, so I've never actually played through those uh, games before. I've never actually owned a Game Gear. So the only time I've ever uh, actually played with one was for like 10 minutes at a dentist's office once. Uh, so that was it. Um, so yeah, uh, beyond that, there is one other game to talk about. And it is a, uh, a twofer. I, I double dipped on this one. I got the standard edition on launch day, and then my deluxe edition came in from Amazon a, a few days later. So this is, yeah, Final Fantasy 16. Really, really, really enjoyed this. Really good game. Really good Final Fantasy game, too. I don't understand the complaints of people that are saying it's not really a Final Fantasy game because it's not turn-based. It's like, dude, you know, half of Final Fantasy isn't turn-based. Like, even even the, the so-called turn-based Final Fantasies aren't truly turn-based. The only turn-based ones are 1, 2, 3, and 10. 
you know, four through nine are turn-based, but they use the active time battle system where everybody's on cooldown and stuff like that. Uh, and they've got timers and stuff. So it's, it's you know, there's there's been action elements introduced as far back as 1990, what, 91, 92? You know, whenever Final Fantasy IV came out. So it, it's, you know, been action-based, you know, at least that far back. Yeah, it's never been a true action, action, action game before. Like the closest, closest it came was 15, which was an action game, but it didn't have a lot of depth. Whereas 16 has a fair amount of depth to it. It's it's a really good game. Really fun game. And beyond that, I mean, you've got Chocobos. You've got Moogles. You've got airships. Yeah, you can't ride around in the airships, but they still exist, you know, in this world. Airships still exist in this world. And, uh, you know, you've got uh, 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 beautiful music, familiar music. The, the logo was done by Yoshitaka Amano. You've got, uh, you know, classic musical cues from uh, Nobuo Matsu in here, like the Prelude, the Final Fantasy Overture, the uh, Victory Fanfare. You know, the, the team behind this is Creative Business Unit 3, which is the same team that's been behind Final Fantasy XIV since at least Realm Reborn. Um, and uh, the, the director was Yoshi P, who was, you know, director of, of Final Fantasy XIV, Realm Reborn, and Onward. Uh, <clears throat> music was done by Soken, who, you know, did music for fourteen, which is some of the best music in the game. Soken is probably uh, the best uh, Final Fantasy composer underneath Nobuo uh, Uematsu. I would still put Uematsu at top, then Soken, then the guy who did uh, 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 12, and then the people who did 13. So that's that's how I would rank it. Uh, the only reason I would not put uh, Yoko Shimamura, who did 15, higher is because 15, outside of one or two tracks, isn't that great of a soundtrack, I don't think. Uh, her Most of her best work is in Kingdom Hearts, so... Uh, really, uh, if you like, uh, you know, Kingdom Hearts music, go go play 15. It's, it's very similar musically. Um, but yes, uh, still very, very much enjoy this. However, I do have a few complaints uh, with Final Fantasy 16, and it all revolves around the Deluxe Edition. Specifically, my first complaint is with Amazon. So the Deluxe Edition, first off, Amazon did not ship this for release day delivery, which is why I had to go out and get a standard copy. Of, I knew I was going to double dip eventually anyways, but I just went ahead and got a standard copy at Best Buy so I could play it on day one. This actually came a few days late. Uh, I think maybe uh, uh, four days late, I think. Anyways, um, this also came with a pre-order a bonus DLC, and uh, they did the same thing with Final Fantasy VII Remake. You know, it shipped late, uh, mostly because of the pandemic at the time. Uh, and so I picked up, you know, a uh, standard copy at, at Best Buy, then got my Deluxe Edition, and got the DLC out of that. Uh, however, the DLC for Final Fantasy VII Remake was included in the box. Uh, Final Fantasy XVI Deluxe Edition is not. And I did not know that uh, until after I opened it up and couldn't find the code. <laughs> so I opened this up. Uh, it is not sealed, unfortunately. So, uh, anyways, that is my gripe with Amazon. My gripe with Square regarding this is, look, look at how thick this thing is. Look at how thick this thing is. Standard edition. What do you get in the deluxe edition? Well, you get, you know, it says it right on the back. It includes a steelbook case and a cloth map of the world, you know, of Valisthea. Why is this so damn thick? Seriously, this is like three, three cases thick. Like, you know, here's, here's two cases and it's not, you know, as thick. And it's like Sonic Origins is even boosted a little bit because it has that uh, 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 cardboard slip cover. Why is this so damn thick? This is like three three Blu-ray cases thick. Well, the reason is because not only do you get the steelbook and the cloth map, you also get packaged in here a, another standard copy of the game. Why? What is the point of this? Like, I understand it might streamline production a little bit, because, oh, you've got all these standard editions. Well, just slip it in the box for the deluxe edition. But you're already making a steelbook. You're already packaging a steelbook into the into the box. Why not just package up with the game inside? Because you see, this is empty. This is completely empty. There is no reason for this. There is absolutely no reason for this. And they did this for Final Fantasy VII Remake as well. Like, yeah, I understand. Okay, you can take the stuff out of the standard edition, put it in the steelbook. That's fine. But why package them together? That makes no sense. It's wasting packaging. This is wasted plastic. You know, this has no right to exist. This copy has no right to exist. Like, they did it right with with Final, uh, Dragon Quest uh, VIII on the, uh, on the PS2. Here, let me grab that real quick. So 
a Dragon Quest VIII on the PS2. This is thicker than your standard, you know, Blu-ray DVD case, you know, but it's not as thick as this. You know, it's like half, half the thickness, half the thickness, not nearly as thick. Now, why did they do this? Well, you might notice this little badge down here. This came with a playable demo for Final Fantasy XII, which meant, you know, at the time, you know, they couldn't fit it on the same disc as, as uh, Dragon Quest VIII. So you have two discs in here, one for Dragon Quest VIII, one for the Final Fantasy XII demo. Now, that's not why this is so thick, because there are multiple other two-disc games, you know, games that came with bonus DVDs, games that came on two discs, and, and so on, on the, on the uh, PS2 that were in standard, you know, size, standard thickness DVD cases. In fact, the game itself in here is in a standard thickness DVD case. And you open it up, there's disc one, there's disc two. But you notice how here for the manuals, you've just got a little, little itty-bitty manual for uh, uh, Final Fantasy XII. Yeah. Well, the reason for that is that because Dragon Quest VIII is a, an RPG and required a thick manual, they couldn't package both manuals plus both discs in the same case. So the manual came separate in the box. Both of these right here. So how are you going to package this? Well, you either do a slip cover or you do a, a box like this. So nice, nice, simple. You know, it all fits nice and neat and even. Boom. Final Fantasy XI, same thing. Typically, you got it in, uh, you know, the, the hard drive bundle. However, if you got the game on its own or, you know, packaged in the hard drive bundle, you got the game in a cardboard slipcover. Again, about, you know, about the same thickness, maybe a little bit thicker. And the reason for that is because of the manual. Like, here's, here's the game. It's still sealed. I've never opened this. Uh, here's the manual. Look at how thick that thing is. That's a book. That's a book. All of that. In a standard, you know, just a, a cardboard slipcover. I can get this back in here. <laughs> you know, let me. Whatever, I'll, I'll mess with that in a bit. Why couldn't they do that for Final Fantasy 16? Why? It just it boggles my mind. They, again, I, they did the exact same thing for Final Fantasy 7 remake, where you know it was an art book instead of a, a cloth map, but instead of putting them in a thinner box with just the steel book and the art book, like seriously, you know who else got it right? Microsoft back in 2008 and 2010. Boom. Gears of War 2. There's a slip cover here with a cardboard insert. Boom. Steel book, art book. The game is in the steel book. Manual, everything. Boom. Halo Wars. Halo Wars, two, 2010. Again, same thickness as Gears of War 2 because you had a packet in here with like all this, this bonus material. Like an entire book is in here. You know, all this bonus material. And the game was in a, uh, uh, a steel book. You know, there's like the standard cover artwork. That's the, the, steel, the collector's edition artwork in a, uh, you know, plastic slip. Game packaged right in here. Microsoft got that right in 2010. Square's gotten this right in the past. Why have they not gotten this right, you know, in, in the last few years? I have no idea. Anyways, that is my rant. That is over. Now we're going to talk about why it's such a small stack of games this time. It's only it's only about like five you know five games or so. If I can put stuff back away real quick and I can show you. All right, five games you know six copies because I got two copies of Final Fantasy 16. So five five games. You know, boom. That's that's the stack this time. Such a small stack over what three four months? Been about four months, right? Actually, yeah, yeah, about four months. So why is it such a small stack? Well, you might notice a new box on the in the background here, you know, right, right up here, for a uh, GeForce RTX 4080. That's right. I I bit the bullet. I upgraded my computer. Uh, I went from a 2070 Super to a 4080. Big, massive step up. Uh, this this thing runs like a dream now. Uh, the reason why I did this was, you might remember, the last Let's Play I did was Diablo. I was planning to do a Diablo 2 Let's Play right afterwards, but I wanted to do Diablo 2 Resurrected. My computer was struggling with uh, playing the game at 4K60 and recording it at 4K60, so I canceled that Let's Play. I still ended up playing through the game, uh, but I canceled the Let's Play. I've taken a break from Let's Plays, possibly, you know, indefinitely. I don't know when or if I'm coming back, um, but I wanted to upgrade my computer before I did. Well, I've done that now, so... 
maybe in the next few months I might start doing Let's Plays again. I don't know. I might I might do some other kind of video. I've got some ideas in the works. Uh, I let my Adobe subscription uh, lapse because it's like six hundred dollars a year, <laughs> and you know that's you know, like half what I paid for the the forty eighty. So um, I let that lapse so that I could save up money for stuff, and so that's why. You know, I've mostly been sticking to new releases and recent releases over the last few months. So, yeah, that is it for this time. I will see you guys next time, hopefully by the end of the year. Maybe I might have some uh, uh, older games, you know, maybe a bigger stack. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, but until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe.